Hello guys, hope you all are good. Welcome to another interesting grand video on flexing. So in this today's video, we are going to learn about dashboards, graphs and more about graphics. So as you know, it is a base for all analytics which we perform in our simulation software. Those are the areas or entities which are really showing the results of what work we have done. So these are vital areas in simulation. So it is very important to understand which graphs to use when and what does each graph say. So without wasting much time, let's begin. So for a dashboard, we already know we have a dashboard tab on the top of this where we are going to have a dashboards. So if you look at this, we have two windows here, add blank dashboard and add parameter table dashboard here. So you can also bring parameters into the play. But currently we will look on understanding blank dashboard. So I have already added one of the dashboards here in this Flexim simulation model. And if you click on that, you will have this dashboard window coming up here. And when you double click on this, you could look all this lot of statistical data, statistical graphs, which we have in the library, which we can use for our day to day analysis purposes. So we'll go from top to bottom and let me know in comments if you have any queries related to the video so we can take and cover those in our upcoming future videos. So we are going to drag in this content graph into the play. So when you click on the content, we have three types of the graphs which are available. One is bar graph, one is line and another is stable. So we'll just go with bar. Mostly the visualization changes whereas most of the settings remains the same. So here we have dragged but as there are no objects, if you could look at here, we need to select a group or entity and we can select lot many things like you can select a group you can add model selected objects to group you can select the objects from here or also from the dropper you can select the object so what we will do is we'll just create a basic model like source then we will have a queue then we will have a processor then we will have a queue and then we'll have a processor and what does this say is we just need to analyze what is the buffer content in the buffers which we have added in between so i'll just drag these connections and drag it to the sink for a source we will just make it inter arrival every one second processing time let it be say three seconds for the processor to let it be 15 seconds the buffer capacity is kept as a maximum it is like thousand and what we will do is we will just select this queue so in order to understand what content is available on our buffer so we'll just reset the model and just run and check what happens so if you could look at this is going to tell us what is the current content so if you click on the queue here in the statistics we can also see what the statistics are so there are some statistics listed here so one is throughput another is content and then we have state time. So content we, is this which we are referring here. So if you could look at this is the current content, then we have minimum, maximum and the average count. So content is what is the part currently available on that buffer. So that's what is the content which is current and that is if you could look at is basically getting reflected. So when you click on this buffer, you could see 47, 48. So this is basically uh, which is getting reflected into the graphs for the content. So now let us understand what are the properties which we... So we are going to see the settings now. So we have learned how to add the objects into the graph. So we can use this picker in order to add or we can use this plus sign and select the objects as per our requirement. Okay. So if we go down in the settings, if you could look at this is to show the legends which we have. So if I just reset and if I just run, you could show this okay, 14, 16, 17, 18, these are all legends. Okay. If you remove this, which you see here, WIP in blue color. So when you have number of graphs, there will be different types of states. So if you click on this, the legends will be going off. If you want legends, you can check in. 
then we have another uh, that is show percentages if you click on this it will show in terms of percentage rather than the raw values so these content 28 29 these are raw value this is the exact number when you click on this and if you want the values to be shown in percentages how much is the content in a queue so 100% queue is occupied then we have the stack bars these stack bars are used to convert the bars which are in parallel in a stacked horizontal bar so as per your requirement if you check it it is going to get converted into then we have here show zero column so when you check this if you see i have also intentionally added this q3 which is not connected to anything in a line it is having the content count as zero so if you want also those uh, buffers to be taken into account in the graphs then you need to check this and then your that buffer will also be shown in a graph we'll uncheck this forever and then we have this minimum count okay so this is nothing but the minimum value you need to be uh, getting displayed on this so if you have a negative values you can just enter that so that the graph goes below zero now the graph starts from zero and goes till 100 so we haven't checked this when you check this it will be showing this as a maximum content 100 and when we uncheck this it is going to automatically uh, consider whatever maximum value has been feeded into the graph okay so this always has been used because it automatically goes on increasing because if we use this it gets constrained to a certain particular number that is 100 and if anything comes above 100 it is not going to take it account so we mostly make it uncheck and use this way which is uh, going to give us an automatic increment in a maximum value then when you come down we have a text properties here for a graph of content in a dashboards so when you look at this there are the precisions you need to consider what should be the precision then we have the uh, point size font size then we have title font size these are all just a visual personalizations you need to pick in if you want if you want to customize a title here you can customize and name it as whatever you want and that would be added here as a custom title then if you want to add the objects the object comes here if you could look at q2 if you don't want you just want q2 it comes this way so whatever as per your requirement you can check and uncheck those things to show column headers then we have here uh, the settings for colors okay now when you go in colors here we have different palettes which we can select depending on our requirement Currently, it directly comes with the internal palette. This is by default feature we have. Okay, based on that, see if you could look at this is WIP content and the blue color is assigned to it. You can also change these colors by coming here or you can select from here. You can also select it with respect to the uh, the speaker. Okay, you can also select with the picker and then. Uh, here you can also cut this or you can also add as per your requirement if you want to add you can click on this and you can add those uh, additional states if you have any and then in edit values here you can auto fill these all the stuffs like colors and all from the global table from range state table so there are additional features which can make this palette colors dynamic okay as per your requirement you can use that then we have sorting here okay you can sort the graphs based on the categories you require okay sort by bar title sort by bar value okay and you can also do more customized stuffs for sorting the stuffs into the graphs so as per your requirement we can also do sorting for the graphs and flexim dashboards then we have advanced features in the dashboards where you could look at we can see it in form of a table if you could look at we are able to see in a form of a table and then you can export this data okay you can export this data or also there is a feature of installation uh, we don't most probably use this advanced feature of installations in object format depth but yes this can also be used if you want to learn this in detail you can go in this help and you can have that explore but uh, yeah this is all about like the overview of the dashboard charts which we have so currently we have worked on on the content graphs then we will look on average content composite whip, whip by type and so on and we'll cover this all graphs 
and understand what are their functionalities why are they used and how to use them and flex them we will generally come with uh, the latest video upcoming in future so stay tuned with us so that uh, you could look at our series of dashboards on creating and modeling them thanks for watching the video till end it really motivates us please do give a like and comment in our videos do subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed to our channel share it with your friends and colleagues we are going to bring a small question kindly provide an answer in the comment section so the question for today's video is what is the use of show zero columns in the content graphs and dashboards do comment in a comment section we really love your comments we will come with another interesting video on average whips in a graph and dashboards so till then stay safe stay safe